This is Tom Rust for TRSB Sports. Today, once again, delighted to be joined by a professional heavyweight 1-0, Maximus Jenkins. Max, how you doing, mate? I'm all right, just a little bit recovering from upset stomach, but I'm all right, you know, you know how it is. Yeah, we were just um, saying before we started, the last time you um, was all bunged up now, you've got a bit of a dodgy belly, it's not a, it's not yeah. a good start, is it? I know, it, it, I, I, I just blame you. I just think it's like, you, you know, you, you put bad luck on people, you know what I'm saying? Like, I reckon if you didn't interview Chris Jenkins, he would have won against Marku, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, cheers, mate. Well, listen, to be, to be fair, you're the only one that's come on that I've ever interviewed that, you know, started to feel poorly before our interviews. I don't know if you start, I don't know if you're getting worried about the questions I'm going to ask you. Don't you worry about that. I'll, I'll answer, you, can, you can ask me anything. Ask me anything. Well, listen, I'm mate, I'm, I'm, um, I'm glad that you've, um, you've come back on because after our, the last interview we did, you were making a lot of friends in the comments. Yeah, well, <laughs> well a mixture of it. It's either... It's either it's fifty percent good and fifty percent bad, and it? it's just like all oh, like negative. But it, you know what? In this game, you have controversy all the time, and if you don't have controversy, there's something wrong, isn't there? So, you know, it's um, but you know, it's water off the duck's back. You know, I'm not. So I'm not. I'm not being a professional boxer, just thinking I'm going to be the next age. I want to see how far my story goes. You get know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not like saying to people, "All oh, right, I'm going to be the next AJ or. I'm going to see, you know, let's, let's see, I get, I can get area level, you know, which is probably touching distance and see if I can go beyond there. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not like, um, you know, it's not like I'm going to be like type challenging for Tyson Fury now, mate. You know what I mean? It's just how far I can go. Maybe it's so, <laughs> Yeah, maybe Shane, yeah. <laughs> yeah, looking at, looking at the comments, I think you're right. I think it was a bit of a mixed bag, you know, 50-50. Some people were, you know, getting behind you, wishing you luck. Some people yeah, yeah. are saying, you know, fair play to you. You know, you're, you're, you're actually stepping in the ring. You're having a go. When you when you read through the comments and people are saying, you know, you're shit, you're no good, um, you're not going to win anything. Does that bother you? Not really, because it's, I mean, the people that say that you're shit, they're probably, they're probably armchair people. And, you know, I, I just think, you know, like, look, irrespective of what level it is, if it's white collar, amateur, whatever, it takes balls to get in there. And I, I take my hat off to anyone who gets in there because at the end of the day, it comes down to two guys clogging shit out of each other. And, you know, the thing is, is that it's either you or them, you know, and ultimately, you know, you, you're going to, you're going to get blows or hurt unless you're exceptionally good. So, you know, it's that old fashioned saying, you can't, you can't go swim without getting wet. So, you know, you've got, you've got to have some resilience and, you know, uh, balls to get in there. So, you know, anyone at white collar, you know, because I started off white collar to further down, I'll take my hat off to him because it, it takes, it takes bollocks to get in there. You know what I mean, so. I think the thing is as well, um, I think when you see comments and people are giving you hate, well, call it what you want. I think it's almost a, a sign that you are actually doing something because I think people like to jump on and, and you know, want, almost want to shut you down when they see people starting to be, a little bit successful or, or getting some success yeah yeah I, I agree you know i mean look i'm look these people i hate you know what i mean I'm, I, I don't i don't envy them you know i just think to myself well you know that's your opinion in the day you know um when you get like i said when you get in the ring it comes down to three judges you know and you know if you excuse me if you don't knock them out you know what i mean and and the thing is is that yeah get behind me great you know um but i'm yeah you know, i'm just a human being i'm a human you know i'm not I'm not doing it to piss people off and getting in there. I'm doing it for my own well-being and giving it a go, you know. So, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not, look, if people want to say bad things, let them, you know, I'm not, it's water off a duck's back, you know what I mean? No, mate, so, I think if you can get in a ring and, you know, go in and fight 18 stone, 19 stone men that want to knock you unconscious, I think you can probably take a comment from someone putting you down. There's quite a few comments on there about Porky's Corner, um, about you being on there. I just want to ask you about how you sort of know him, what what the channel is. I've seen a little bit about it, but you know what what you go on and talk about and how how you, that sort of come about for you. Um, yeah, so you know, Porky, okay, Russ. Uh, so I mean, I originally was like a good advocate or, or like really was a fan of the channel, and I just simply emailed him like two or three years ago now. I think nearly three years ago, emailed in 
um and you know so i'll come on and talk about bo- uh, bollocks and stuff you know with you and and we just hit it off and he's become a really good friend you know he's opened up doors for me um you know he's he's got a coach called julie mcgowan uh for me who's he's second to none um when you got you when you when you've got someone who's like coached like a british champion like gary sykes you know uh, in your corner you know what i mean it's it's ridiculous you know what i'm saying you know it's, it's almost like a a Man United youth player coming up the ranks and they've got Ryan Giggs walking in. You know, it's sort of like that, you know what I mean? And and that's the level we're talking about. You know, you got to think, you know, it takes some doing to get a British champion at like lightweight, you know. So, and having him bring up links, open up avenues, I've got a lot to give to Russ. And, you know, and, he's, and he, you know, he advises me on fights, take that, don't take that. I listen to him a lot. Um, and it's about staying in my lane because I don't want to start, you know, like having offers, like let's say, for example, this is just before someone jumps on the bandwagon and says, oh, he never offered you. Let's say, for example, Fraser Clark said, oh, we'll put you, give you 20 grand to fight him. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> Not just yet. Anyway, give me like a year and a half or something. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like not staying in your lane. That's the p- p- point, you know, um, and knowing where your limitations are because at the end of the day, I'm one and know. Um, fighting a week Saturday. Um, hopefully, I'll go two and zero, and just keep building my record and just keep going up and up and see where it takes me. That's all it is. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not looking to take on the world. I'm just seeing how far my story goes. It's there's no harm in that, is there? I think as well, being being a heavyweight and protecting that O is so so important. There's no point jumping in with someone that you know is a 50 50 fight or you know the likelihood that, you know you might come away with a defeat. You want to know, take your time, fight some people, get some rounds under your belt, a little bit of experience. I was watching a video you done with Porky on Monday, actually, when it was uploaded. And I think already that's on like five, six thousand views. I think he was saying he's hit five million views on the channel. And I think the difference between you and some people as well is that you are only one to know, but you've got a decent following. And I think these days that that, that that's a massive massive thing and is going to obviously help you as well because it's all well and good getting a fighter on the show but if they can sell tickets massive benefit yeah i mean this this goes back to if you look at um so i don't i don't like confess or say i'm the best fighter like about you know what i mean um you know i'm i'm probably there's plenty of other people better than me you know what i mean but what i do have is a following it's sort of like if you look at it like ebony bridges I'm not, not going to slag her off, but are you telling me if she didn't have a following, would she be where she is? You know, if she didn't look good in a bikini, you know, and it, it shows, you know, like if she wasn't what she is, I mean, if she made out in that last fight, oh, I can fight. No, look, I'm sorry, Ebony, garbage. <laughs> You're garbage. I'm going to be honest about it. You know, you, you won probably the skin of your teeth by, by two rounds. Um, and when Shannon Courtney gets back in there, even injured, she'll punch your face upside down because she's a different level to you. Um, you know, I, I, it must be demoralising for someone like Mark Tips going from Dylan White and a great fighter like that to her. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, know, you should be advising him over fucking Tyson Fury. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think no matter who you are, I think you've got to use your attributes. And if you look good in yeah. bikini, or you can fight, or you can talk well. You can sell tickets. You can promote a fight. Then you know you just gotta do what you can to to you know create interest and create hype around a fight. What do you listen to as well? I know you you know you've come in here a couple of times. You obviously go and pull this corner. If you're like on your own, chilling out in a car, do you listen to my, many podcasts? IFL, boxing, uh, social, uh, or is it something completely different? I can't. I'm gonna be honest there. I can't stand boxing social because he's they're so far up John Fury. You know, the sort of eating the tea for him. You know, so I don't really b- watch boxing social. I do like IFL because I like that Omar. I do like that Omar because he does sort of asks all questions. Um, and I, I don't mind Coogan. You know, when all that stuff with me and Russ, uh, me and Porky went to, uh, you know, to not them to front out a certain individual i spoke to coogan then and i asked him directly why don't you ask these 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 questions this this and this you know and i understand because at the end of the day 
and and I suppose you would be in the same, you know, as you're as you're growing, you've got to sit on slightly on the fence. You can't start asking real awkward questions because you know you've got a living to make at the end of the day. And Coogan does, and you know, Coogan's spread and butter is IFL. So you know, I do see the point of view. I just think you can maybe push it a little bit more, especially with Eddie. Um, you know, I, I mean, you know. So, I, I, but but if I'm going to listen to anything, I do like pound for pound. You ever listen to that? I have. Do you know what? It's funny, mate. Because since starting this channel, right before starting this channel, I'd probably predominantly listen to IFL. Shout out to them as well. Billion views. Um, I listen to them. I like Umar as well. I think Oscar's pretty good. Obviously, Coogan um get to get some great footage but since starting this I've, I've come across so many so many other channels but just because you know we've been searching for videos see who's doing what uh, there's a young lad called fred talks fighting he's 17 yeah years I've, I've just listened to him recently i i did mine i don't mind him actually he's all right yeah you know i mean yeah i think i think for a young lad um he's, he's doing incredibly well he's got he's got some big names on there as well like deji's eddie hearn he's he gets you know, he goes to the, all the events, so he's doing really well. Um, there's a few others. I've uh, got October Red Box in a lady. Um, I, she's she's doing good bits at the minute. Yeah, mate, yeah. I, I'm sure there's a lot more that we've not even come across. But I'll tell you what I've been listening to. Uh, the James, James English, anything goes with James podcast. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, I don't mind James English. Yeah, I like, I like some of his stuff, yeah. We um, I watched an interview that he did with Roger e. Giggs. He spoke about the affair. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I actually reached out to him and got him on the channel, and um, yeah, the videos on the on the channel now that that was quite interesting because although we predominantly interview professional fighters, I want to try and keep the, the channel like diverse and get a few other different athletes on to talk about their yeah, different definitely. sports. Well, I mean, it, it's a sports podcast, so you can diverse into other things if need be. You know what I mean? You know, it's it's you've left yourself wide open to going to other avenues so it's not a bad idea really i need to ask you as well i know these days it, you know people do sit on the fence and we live in a world where you know everyone wants to jump and everything you say do you do you think you're controversial yeah yeah um i just um say what i think and it just comes out like projectile and the, the problem is the one thing i have and, and it's um that's why me and Russ probably get on so well. We just say what we think, and we, you know, and <coughs> and to be honest, even at work, when I speak to clients, not pulling their weight or they're not exercising, I just say what I think, and it has got me into trouble, but, you know, I just can't help myself, and sometimes, you know, <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to be, you got to be cool to be kind sometimes, and, it, yeah, and if there is an elephant in the room, I address it, you know, it's no point beat around the bush you know what I mean you might as well just say how it is and that's it you know because you know what what you know it is what it is my my dad always said to me right he goes if it looks like a turd it smells like a turd it's a fucking turd it's simple <laughs> you know and, and and that's that's it to be fair um you know it, it's it is what it is and, and that's what you have to do you have to address it and if it is what it is yeah you got you got to take it for it is you know so do you feel like that's something you're going to become more conscious of though the further you go and you, the further you go on in your career because as much as you want to say what you want to say at some points you might have to rein it in because it might be the difference between you getting a fight getting a broadcast deal yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah this, this is what i mean even russ and a few other people said the same thing in the background coach judy you got yeah, you know, even my my partner. She said she got to rein it in sometimes. And yeah, you know, when I'm getting ringside tickets like Fleming for the zone and stuff like that, and they're giving me, you know, I could have said what I really thought with uh, what I thought of Dean White when I went up to him. But you know what? I'd rather make bridge bridges. And you know, and to be fair, to be honest with it, to be honest with you, I've sent a few fighters his way, his way, um, because he pays his fight as well, uh, Dean White. So. And, and the same with Spencer Fear, and you know, me and him weren't really on good terms. But you know, again, build a bridge. You know, it's no point making enemies um, because it don't get you anywhere. And it's like you can say Eddie, Frank, and all the Frank Warren, all these people. Are this you can shout your mouth off. Any day, it's not going to get you fights. 
Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying like you know, grease them and that, but at the same time, don't slag them off. Just play the game a little bit, and I think I think that's the key thing with myself, um, because there will be a fight that will happen. I'll be on one of theirs at some point. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie, that has been offers out there, but it's, it's not the right time yet. So, yeah, you've got to. Yeah, I mean, it's like I'm careful what I say on Instagram now, you know, because I used to be, I used to be ruthless. You know, years ago, I used to be ruthless and come in this game first, even when I was white collar, I used to say some horrendous things. I think, you know what, I've got to, got to rein it in by 30 or 40% a little bit. Well, you've you know what seen I mean? it, haven't you? You've seen, you've seen where I think it was, you know, you mentioned, was it Umar earlier from IFL? Wasn't it years ago he put out a couple of tweets about Tyson? Was it, I think, I think that was a story sort of come back and bit me in the arse a bit. So I suppose, you know, it, it, there's always people out there looking for something to pull you up on. Yeah, exactly. And, and you've got to watch it, you know, because the end of the day is that, you know, if you, if you, let's say if you, you know, are well-spoken or, you know, you hold yourself up well, you, you know, and the public sort of like you or don't like you, it's like half and half, yeah, you're more like if you're hated you, you, and totally hated, well, why would anyone watch you? You know, so I do get it. But at the same time, I'm not going to be eating their food for them either. So, you know, that's one thing I will say. But, uh, you know, look, Eddie, you got to think Eddie, Frank, they all got to play a game. They've got to all play a game because they're, in day, they're promoters. Uh, they've got to big up, like, look, look, look at Frank, Warren and the, that undercard. Right now, he's got to big it up somehow. He's got to sell it. You know, oh, it's brilliant fights, and these what we've got available. You know, now he knows deep down it's not the best undercard. <laughs> Let's be honest, it's not. You know, if, if if my mates, three of my mates, are paid two hundred and forty five quid a ticket, right? And they're in some all right seats, and they're livid at that undercard. To be honest with you, so you know, I I don't think that fight will happen. I think Dylan White will pull out. You do. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think they'll put either in some like they'll have a backup plan. Then and all it will be is you know they put the show on, um, and that'd be it. You know what I mean? You know they put a. Oh, I think Del Boy would be in the background, someone like that. Someone like there is sort of someone like that will be in the background. You know, maybe. I was going to say so Joe Joyce, but I think he's injured. Well, I mean, the thing is, why can't they put Daniel Dubai on the undercard? That's what I don't understand. You know, surely you'd be like you could put him as chief support. You know, you you know, I mean, I you know, the, the obvious ones was Isaac Clow because he's Tyson Fury's mate. Tommy Fury, I don't particularly want to see him, right? Oh, he's got a hard fight. Well, you, you know what? You, you know, you, you ballsed out against uh, bloody what's his face, um, Jake Paul. You know, you like it a lump it, you did ballsed out, you know, made up some fake stuff, and that's it. You know, simple, you know. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I just think they could have made a better undercard, in my opinion. If Daniel Tabar could have been a big drawer on that. Because he's up and he's up and coming. He's going to be the next. He's going, I believe he'll be heavyweight champion at some point, Daniel Tabar. He's, he's too good. Um, so, you know, why, why can't they put him on there? I don't understand. I think as well, going, going back to what you said about being controversial, I suppose at the end of the day as well, you know, you're not a politician, you're a professional boxer and people want to hear what you've got to say. And I, I think for, for what you do, that that's, that's important. I want to ask you as well, what do you think about social media? Because I've seen a lot lately where people are coming off social media, Facebook, Instagram, because people are almost you know, like getting their phone out or whatever, sitting on it, sitting on it for hours. Everyone's got a great body. Everyone's driving a Ferrari, sitting on the beach, making loads of money, living the perfect life. And, and I've, yeah, I've heard a few people say, I'm coming off it. It makes my life look shit, feel shit. Uh, what do you, you know, what do you think about that? And, you know, have you heard that yourself? Because I'm hearing a lot of that at the moment. I, I, I haven't heard that as such, but I, I do feel like a lot of boxers are on social media too much. Um, I'm probably on it too much, but normally this time, this normally goes off and downstairs and I've got a separate alarm that wakes me up because I do not want to be on my phone. Um, it's simple as that. And I think some people can't help themselves. Um, and to be honest with you, 
you know you can say that yeah look if if it's the standard joe joe blog blogs um coming off social media fair enough but you know if you like an empty bridges you can't come off so you need to stay on there to relate to because you're bringing in money love you know what i mean so you know i think um i think it's all in your head really because look you look how like you look at that do you remember when they were interviewing shannon courtney and they and they had two pictures of her side by side of her face and that uh before half an hour after half an hour and then she's filled it blah 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 right that's what social media is a lot of fake a lot of it's yeah. fake and people and people have to not read into it as much you know what i mean and i think it's a mental thing maybe i don't know you know yeah i think it's difficult i feel like you know we use it for for you know to promote what we do I think sometimes yeah. you, you can sit there and you can get sucked in and watching video after video. But it does amaze me because, you know, the amount of people I see on TikTok and they'll just sit there. Honestly, I, I work from home now, but previously I used to work in an office before the pandemic. And we used to have this area where we'd sit on our lunch or whatever, and people would just sit there for a full hour just scrolling. And I just I just don't get it. I, I you know, social media is massive. It's part of the, you know, the area that we live in. But I feel like if you are, starting to feel like it is affecting your mental health just just get off of it because like you're saying you know i i i, I see obviously you on uh, instagram and often you know it'd be two or three days before you post something and it's not a lot other fighters might be on it 24 7 i think it's just sometimes finding that right balance but i suppose if you are using it a lot and it doesn't affect your mental health and you're fine then you know all, all, that's that's great but for people that do just get sucked into it and and look at these nice places like like the pandemic look at all the influencers that are sat in Dubai again it's just you're just gonna be all right you know, what I mean? you know it's quite funny TikTok only got bigger over pandemic I don't think it'd be as half as big if it weren't for the pandemic TikTok is one social media advocate that's done well out of the like um the pandemic because everyone had nothing to do and started doing videos include myself you know what I mean? So, you yeah. know, because, it, 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 you know, you sat at home. So I, I think if it weren't for the pandemic, TikTok would be half as well known as it would be. You know what I mean, personally? Yeah, of course. And of course, as well, don't get me wrong. You know, there are, you know, social media is great. You know, at the same time, you know, without Instagram, if this was like 20 years ago, I'll, I, you know, I, I obviously sent you a message. Do you want to jump on? So for that and for what we do, it's perfect. Um, but I suppose it's just the way you use it, really. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Just want to talk to you a little bit about exhibition fights because we've seen a lot lately. I don't know if you saw the four Eddie Hall fight, uh, Deji, uh, I think it's KSI's brother, the YouTube stuff. I, I feel like a little while ago there was quite a few fights. Maybe boxing was becoming a little bit diluted, but it seems like sometimes if it makes money, it makes sense. Do you watch it? Do you, is it something that you would do? But everyone's have, has a price, don't they? I mean, are you telling me if let's say I don't know, I was let's give you an example. It won't ever happen. Let's say I was British champion, right? And retired or something, and someone goes, Oh, would you come back and fight Thor for 10 million pounds? You're gonna jump at it, ain't you? You know, it's it's everyone has a price, and this is the thing, you know. Um, I think boxing, Thor and Eddie, I, 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 look, they're on about a rematch that I don't particularly want to see that again. Well, I did watch it because my um, it was free though, wasn't it? It. yeah, it was free. Yeah, oh, the link yeah. was terrible. The link was absolutely. Oh, I've terrible. heard that from so many people. Yeah. Oh God, I can't have to restart in doing this and that, and it was terrible. But you know what? I'll give Thor his due. He tried to box. Um, and I think he's been in better opponents, and but it, it annoys me because Eddie Hall he, he gave this perceived over lockdown and that he's put a ring in his house and all this shit. And, you know, it, it just looked crap to be honest. He was just like looking for the right hand and henching over. He wasn't telegraphing with the jab. He wasn't trying to set up. You know, and and so I don't know who his coach was, but you know anyone who's got a, a slight boxing brain, and I don't perceive myself to be the best ever in that but what I've learned is is that if you've got a good right hand or something you always try to telegraph it and set it up with the jab yeah 
you know, if it's a faint or, you know, working off the jab, you know, and he weren't doing anything. And, and Thor, um, he's got a long reach and he, and he you know, it, it, look, they were both poor, let's be honest about it, but Thor tried a box and, you know, Thor, he, he's obviously, he's been in better people uh, over in like, um, in fights, Thor, he, he's, 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 he's fought some well-known, well, I say well-known people, but people that, you know, uh, got in there and there was some quality in there. So, you know, so <clears throat> um, regardless of seeing KSI and people like that, look, Jake Paul, you know, we're saying expeditions like, like Jake Paul, he's good for the sport because he's bringing eyes on the sport, isn't he? So why not? You know, I, I know people say, oh, he's this and that, but he can box, he can fight. You know, you got to give his credit. You know, you get, people rag him about Tyrone Woodley, you know, he, oh, he's not a but He's a striker in MMA in his heyday. He, he was a striker. So, you know, he knew how to strike. And Jake Paul beat him, not once, but twice. And he did well. And I, and I think to myself, why not? You know, because the thing is, is that, I'm going to go on a rant here now because Eddie, all the time, Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, they're not making fights happen. No fights are having. No one's fighting each other. You know what I mean? You know, it's it's fights should be out. I mean, Joe Joyce, he's a limbo. You know, no one wants to fight him. Herkovich, he's without his, no one wants to avoid him. You know what I mean? All these fights aren't getting made. No one's fighting each other. You know, Andy Joshua, oh, well, he's used it's supposed to come back. Well, fight someone else in the meantime. Go against Joe Joyce. You know what I mean? It's gone the days that people don't fight each other now. They're turning into, you know, and I'm going to get criticised this because it, it, it is what my mate Russ Porky repeats, but we are turning into businessmen, um, boxers, and it's too much of that. You know, if you look at Mike Tyson, they'll have a fight once every two months, you know. Yeah, um, it, it, it does seem like a bit of a game of chess. You know, boxers are trying to, navigate in a certain way do you like the ufc model yeah i do because dana white and i'll give him his due here like i think eddie Earn was saying about it the other day uh to coogan in an interview oh like you know he went to ufc his first ufc event eddie and he was talking to dana white blah 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 and you know they had a joke about oh we should swap jobs you should be chairman of matchroom for a, a you know a year and i should be chairman of ufc and Coon goes, oh, who do you reckon is going to be better? I think we'd be as good as each other. I say, no, you what? Not. Dana Wright would rinse you because fights would happen, right? Fights would happen. He'd say, because you see, I think what it is is with UFC, they get a set fee. Uh, they get a set fee, I don't know, a quarter of a million each fight or 200,000. It's a pot. It's a set fee of pot for a th three fight deal. And they renew it. It's like, if you, uh, where's that? I read somewhere. If you want to get into the UFC, when you come off Bellator and that, what Dana White does is he shoves you three fights. Okay, you get paid for them individually. Now you have to win two of out of those three fights. If you don't, you don't get a UFC contract. And that's and that's how we and you know and, and if two people got beef, he goes, "Oh, you two got an issue with each other, right? Let's get it on. Six yeah, weeks yeah. time, you're fighting. It's none of this like oh well, uh, uh, turn and throw in and." See Dylan White doing this with Tyson. It's just crap. It's, you know, and it's not going to happen. Um, the more, you know, the undercards drab because you're not letting anyone down. Um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, it's just a shambolic. And what, for 94? No, if, if I was bought a ticket, I'm glad I didn't now. I'd be disappointed at that undercard. Yeah. I've, I've, yeah. With, with, like you said, with the UFC, mate, I think. When you when you compare it to boxing, I think maybe sometimes in boxing, to maybe too many TV platforms, too many promoters, um, too many governing bodies, and just things that get in the way of making fights. Where with the UFC, it's almost like if you don't want to fight each other, then you know sort of do one if you like. But this is what I mean. And if Dana White came to boxing, it'd be awesome for boxing. It'd be all right, right? It'll pressure people, right? You two fighting or what? You know what I mean? It would just it would just get shit done. I think I genuinely think he would. And he'll make Eddie earn think, oh, well, you know, this, that, and the other. He'll make things happen a little bit quicker. Um, prove that. I think it's proven that with Boxer a little bit when they've obviously made, literally made the Savannah Marshall and Clarissa Shields fight. You know what I mean? Eddie, Eddie couldn't even make that. 
you know, it just shows that certain things he can't do and can do. And, you know, there's no disrespect to Eddie. It's, it all comes down to money and, you know, what his cut is and what he, he makes out of it. You know what I mean? So, I think uh, as know, fans, I, yeah, I think as fans, we just want to see these fights happen. And I feel like with Eddie Hearn sometimes, I think he says it himself on interviews, maybe sometimes he says too much. Um, but then, you know, people want to hear him talk and talk, you know, honestly. And, you know, to be fair to him as well, like we see him at these events, mate, he's there all night doing interviews. But I think, yeah, for me uh, and for a lot of people, just, just want to see these fights happen. The best fight, the best. Because, you know, it's like Calm Brook. It happened, happened too late. But I was going to say, I was going to ask you, do you think we'll ever see Joshua, AJ? Uh, sorry, Fury, AJ. The only way it happens is this. This is the only way it happens. There was a prank Eddie Hearn did on April Fool's Day. AJ, uh, Dylan White's cancelled. It's be AJ v Dylan White. Because Dylan White pulled out of Fury. I can see that happening, you know, as, as much of a prank that is. And AJ or whoever will win that, and the winner will just fight Fury and they'd somehow get it on. I just don't think it, it, it's just. You know, Frank has said it in his in his interviews. You know, Dylan White's got contract obligations; he hasn't fulfilled them. So, you know, it's like he's losing out on money already. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's like he's the the trying to shaft him already. So, or trying to cut him out. So, you know, it's just a big shot. I've I've never known. I've never known a fighter not to turn up to a press conference. Whether that's whether that's like he doesn't want Fury in his head. Or it's something else. We don't know. Um, it, yeah, it's hard to say. There's so so much speculation about why he didn't turn up. What you know, what his motivations were for not making an appearance. I saw. Um, I was listening to Talk Sport, and they had Dillian White's lawyer on there, and Frank Warren. I, have you heard it? I was going back. Yeah, Jerry Bence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Frank Warren was saying, you know, look in the contract. You know, part of it is that with your social media platform, you promote the fight. Um, and obviously, yeah, he's, he's not saying anything, but I, obviously I hope it happens, but nothing would surprise me. It wouldn't, it would not surprise me if, you know, you've woke up tomorrow or next day and, you know, Dylan White's pulled out. This is what I mean. I, I just think it's, it's too much people shafting each other and, you know, and boxing shouldn't come like, I mean, look at the days of Tyson. Mike Tyson, he, he'd fight someone once every two or three months. At least have five or six fights a year. Um, it was quite hungry, and, and that's how they were. You know, you look at the Fab Four, Duran and Leonard and Hearns and, you know, Hagler, you know what I mean? They were fighting frequently. Um, now it's come into, like, a money-thirsty sport. You know, we're not, we're not seeing fights because we've got to go through all these different loopholes and, you know, and Oh, it's just, it's just dreadful. It's a shame really, because it is killing boxing. And you know, the saying on one hand, all these social media platforms, boxing is booming. I don't think it's booming. I, I do think it's on its ass at the minute, and it's a shame because you know, I mean, like if you look at the heavyweight division now, you look outside the top ten, it's absolutely excuse my language, a fucking poor, right? You know, I'm sorry, but. And I'm going to mention these names. Yeah, you, know, you look at people: Steve Robinson, fucking Jay McFarlane, Nick Campbell, even myself. We shouldn't be even on a TV platform. Oh, yeah, years yeah. ago, years ago, years ago, we wouldn't be on a TV platform. You know what I mean? We wouldn't be anywhere near of talks on going on to because we wouldn't be simply good enough. You know. Now it's been that poor and drab boxing. You know. It's, you know, I've never seen it so poor. So, and, I, and I'm criticising myself here because even I shouldn't be anywhere near it or touch the distance of it, but somehow it is, you know. So, you know, let, let's, let's not, let's call a spade a spade. You know, it is it is what it is. And it's a shame because boxing is, is sort of dying at the, at the moment. And, you know, we need something to spice it up. Now, Eddie saved himself with this Lee Wood fight and Colin flight, uh, which is fantastic. You know, um, then you had a fight, obviously Josh Warren, that was a half decent fight. You know, he's, he's getting on a roll now. If he can keep that going, it might start pick up again. 
but Frank's got to do the same thing as well, putting on decent cards, you know what I mean, as well. So, because are you telling me, yeah, you know, if uh, Eddie Hearn, and I'll give, I'll defend Eddie Hearn here. If Eddie Hearn put that undercard on, right, on, on one of his shows, let's say he had Fury being white and he, he was dinner, and he put that undercard on, he'd get crucified. He would get absolutely battered. Why isn't Frank getting the same treatment? He's not enough abuse going that way. You know, Eddie Earn would get, you know, he'd get roasted. So what, why is Frank any different? And that's what I don't get. You know, it's a drab undercut. That's, you know. You often see though sometimes, don't you, if the main event, is a brilliant fight. Sometimes people almost forget about the undercard if the main event is a is a brilliant fight. Maybe just before we speak about Nick Campbell and Jay McFarlane, who were on the undercard of the um, Taylor Catrell fight for the Scottish Heavyweight Championship, talk to us about how the next couple of weeks look like for you, because I know you've got a fight coming up. Um, like how was your sort of preparation, your opponent? Just tell us what yeah what the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, I've got a I've got a lad. <laughs> called um, Pavel Kvet, uh, Quebec or something. He's, uh, he's 9 and 27. But I've been told today he's got COVID. So I don't know if he's, he could be likely pull out. So if that's the case, they'll give me some probably worse. Um, which is for whatever reason, I still get the fight. Then... The week after, I've been shoved another fight in my face, which I might take. Um, I don't know how opponent would be on another cut, so it looks like I'm out in Prague for about 10, uh, Czech Republic for 10 days. So, uh, one's in Prague, the first yep. one's in Prague, and next one's in uh, Ostra, Ostravana, Ostravana, or something. It's just, a, it's about, it's a, it's a biggish town or biggish city. And uh, it's about east of Prague, two okay. hours on the track. Yeah, so, so yeah, so I've got them I've, and preparation. It's gone solidly well, but obviously I've had this stomach bug today, um, and it's it's tricky for me because obviously I, I own my own business. So because of obviously the COVID regulations and COVID rules, uh, when people are isolated, has cover staff Tuesday, so I couldn't get over to see Coach Judy and do some work with him. So I jibbed out of that. I had sparring Wednesday, which was okay. Um, I've got spar- so sparring this Sunday with some lads in Darlington, some decent amateurs and some big thudders. So I'm looking forward to that and seeing what they got. Some nice lads. <coughs> because it's hard. This one thing's hard as well. This is why the heavyweight division is so poor. It's hard to get heavyweight sparring. I'm always against a cruiserweight or bloody... You know what I mean? You know, like heavy, and it's getting frustrating. You know what I mean? I want heavyweights, you see. So, sparring's sometimes far between. So, I've got to sometimes travel to sparring, you see. So, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's, go- it's going well. It's going well. It's just I've had bugs. Like, last time I had a bug with you, or, like, that cold. And now I've got this stomach itch. Don't, just don't talk to me before you fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the basic, yeah. I'm just going to not talk to you. I'm going to ignore you. Block here, yeah, the whole lot, Tom. <laughs> um, and I know you know you won a one and at the minute. How many fights do you want under your belt before you think about taking a step up? I mean, well, this second fight, I suppose it's supposed to be a realistic yeah, step up. Um, <clears throat> he's been with some credible opponents. Um, uh, who's he been in with? He's been with in his early days, Pulev and people like okay. that. This guy. Uh, he, he got knocked about real bad. He, he lost in the first round. That's in his early career. So he just hasn't got any punch for this. So it's, but he's pulled out. So it's a shame. So that would have been a step up. I mean, I'd like to at least, you know, I would like to think all a little bit of step up each time, you know, and maybe, you know, I'm, I'm certainly looking to fight in the UK end of this year. Definitely. Um, I've been, I've, I've had, I've had a few little, cheeky offers come my way you know off um, boxer and um, design but we'll see where it takes me you know what I mean because I just want to keep getting that ring craft because you know experience is everything you know it's right being able to fight but I haven't I've only had the fight like a firefight in white collar I need a firefight in professional you know what I mean and you know until you experience that I don't think you're fully prepared so 
And coming back um, around to Nick Campbell and Jay McFarlane, obviously, again, on the undercard of um, the uh, Taylor Catchell fight. I was watching that fight, and I think Adam Smith was referring to the level of, 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 of both of those fighters. If you were to step in a ring with either of those, how would you see the fight going? So, Jay, as he is now, I beat him. Nick. See, Nick, I mean, you know, he's got long levers, so all you need to do is get in the inside of him, which I'm quite capable of doing. Um, just don't be on the end of his reach and get in. And Jay was sort of doing that, trying to do that, but he just didn't have the fitness. Um, and just you need to rough him up, Nick. That's the, that's the best way. And I thought I'd beat both of them at the minute. Um, and I, I think, you know, at the moment, you know, the, the maybe if you can argue, you could maybe be, there might be a bit too seasoned for me, if you want to call it that. But I think truly deep down, they say, oh, you've got eight weeks or 10 weeks and you're fighting either of them. I think I'll beat them. I've got notice. I'll beat them. I wouldn't, you know, the thing is, you've got to prepare, you know, and, and preparation is everything for me because uh, uh, I, I like to prepare. So, and who's a harder fight? You know, I think obviously Nick, because Nick won. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's got any power. I look at him and I think he's not anything spectacular. You know, I started to, you know, uh, be little him. Fair enough, he's willing to get in there, but I think he'll only go so far, personally. So, so next fight, you'd have no problem jumping in with Nick Campbell or Jay McFarlane. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Well, listen, mate, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see either of those fights, um, Nick Campbell. You could even do the face-off, Tom. You could even do the face-off. We could come down to your your area. I'll, I'll give him some shit, you know, either one of them. Um, you know, but, I'd, I'd end up, but that'd be the worst thing they do because uh, I live in their head free. So, you know, they won't want to do it. So, you know, I, I think I'll beat both of them. Um, I, I say Steve Robinson's a bit above them. Um, at the minute, um, but Eve's not miles ahead of him. You know what I mean? You know, so it's yeah. I, I just think it's they're there to be had. You know. Have so. you have you heard of a heavy, heavyweight called Franklin Ignatius? No. Okay. <laughs> That's the end of that one. <laughs> why, why? 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 No, it was just um, I was thinking of other other potential opponents. You, he was. Um, we went to a show in Brentwood uh, a little while ago. There was an English title fight, uh, Jamie Robertson yeah. against Bill Ad Billy Allington. And uh, yeah. he, he was on the undercard. I just wondered if you've heard of him and um, if he was someone that you would fight. I'm not sure what, what path he's looking no, for. No, I, I look him I look him up. I look him up now. I look him up now after this. It's funny you say about the head to head as well because we we actually I did that a little while ago. We had Jack Hughes on and Paul Roberts. Um, they, they were fighting. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, well, obviously you've seen it, but fair play to both of them. They were incredibly um, kind to each other, I suppose. It, it was almost like the PG version of Gloves Are Off. They were too kind. I was trying to say a few things, like, you know, get get under their skin a little bit and try and get them fired up, but neither of them were having it. They were just too, they're just too chilled <laughs> out. So if I could get you on, I think you, you of anyone or someone who you know is not afraid to say what they think i did actually try reaching out to uh jay to to get him on the channel just to talk about his journey the last fight what's yeah. next but i think unless he follows you you can't message him i know some people do that which is a bit of a pain in the ass um yeah. i suppose for him understandably you can see why he doesn't because you probably just get pestered a lot i mean I'll, i've got his number so I'll, i could actually shove you his number if you want to contact him Send him a cheeky text message. He'll be all right with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, mate. Honestly, if that if that's a fight that you know materializes, whether it's two fights. Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? I'd rather right without sounding too no disrespectful. Like Nick Campbell's got like a personality of a oh I don't know of a pen to be honest. And I know it might sound harsh, but you know when you speak to him, he's a little bit. You know, boring, you know, and and to be honest, Jane finally has got a bit of character about him, you know, it's a bit different. And you know, and like out of the two, what would sell better or the public would see it for obviously me and Jane McFarlane because there's a bit of a character there, a bit, a bit of two characters there. 
I mean, you know, when you when you try and like speak to a brick wall, like you know, who's got more personality, Nick Campbell, you know, it's it's not like you know what I mean, Christ, it's like with him, lights are on, no one's like, it was like, like fucking hell. It's like the engine's running, but no one's behind the wheel. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. Sorry, I'm... Nick. Sorry, sorry, Nick. But I've got to say, I'll see it, lad. You know, um, you got pillow hands as well. <laughs> so so, well, so your, your, your preference, your preference would be to have a press conference with Jay McFarlane if, if you could fight either of those. If I could fight Jay. I think it'd be, I think it'd be entertainment from an entertainment value. You know, I mean, you know, he's not a, like he's great, but you, do you know what it is? He is good. You know what? You know what? I will take that back. Jay is good. Jay was fit, right? Like when he fought in his early days against uh, like a, a lad I know, Mark Bennett. Mark Bennett fought Alan Babich in um, Matchroom Garden yep. fights. Um, Mark Bennett can bang, um, but Jay McFarland just. Lost to him, and I just think he must have been—he he must have been fit um, to fight. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, so I just generally think he got in with Nick Campbell, um, fit, and he wasn't fit, and whatever reason he fucking, you know what I mean? Like just about lost, and he only just lost. And you know, Nick couldn't exactly finish him off, so you know he's—he's he's got a heart of a bloody. Yeah, you know I mean, P. Yeah, you know, so you know, it, the the fact of the matter is, is that's why Jay. I think Jay fit would knock him out. Personally, that's my personal opinion. Yeah, you know, if he said, "Look, yeah, you know, I'll get myself, I'll get a two stone off," I think Jay would be forced to reckon with. But at the minute, as he is, oh Christ, I'd I'd, I'd love to arrive into him. You know. Yeah, I remember watching the fight actually. I think that you know Jay was looking for the overhand right all night. Uh, Nick hit him with some some big shots and. Yeah. You know, I suppose you know his punch power is you know that's sub subjective. And I suppose it depends on what your punch resistance is like as well. Um, but you know, if if that ever materializes, mate, hundred percent, we we can we can do something. Oh. I'll, probably, I'll probably I'll probably ask one question and then that that'll be oh. it. You you two, you two can go at it. Um, I, I, just, I I just look at Nick and think, fucking hell, like I'm I'm selling the air, not you, Christ. Yeah, you know I mean, you just you just bloody. I don't know, like he had an IQ test that come back negative, you know what I mean? You know, don't laugh. Look, you're trying so hard not to laugh, but it's so funny. <laughs> Mate, before before we let you go, um, just a couple more from me. Do you follow any other sport? I know you used to play rugby, but do you... Do yeah, you rugby league. Sport? Yeah, I'm a whole FC fan. So, well, because I used to play for them. Um, and, and I like Leeds Rhinos, to be fair, so I like both of them teams, so... Watch rugby league quite well. Um, I do like only the Six Nations. I like the rugby union. I like watching that. Yeah. Um, Six Nations only. The, the, the club stuff is so boring. Um, um, and I do, I do like a bit of now and again watching snooker. As bizarre as it is, because it's skillful. You know what I mean? It's a thinking game. So yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, do you know what I can I can understand that because I went to Spain a few years ago because my nan and granddad used to live over there, and my granddad's a huge huge snooker fan. And this was when Ronnie O'Sullivan was on was on fire, and yeah. he he made us watch the whole the whole Crucible. Um, yeah. And initially I was like, oh, what am I doing? I'm over in Spain watching in snooker. I should be sunbathing. But when you actually sit down and you start to I understand a little bit. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, you know, I know nothing about snooker, but it, it's a, again a bit like a game of chess. They're almost like two, three shots, you know, in front of themselves in their mind. Yeah. And yeah. what watching Ronnie O'Sullivan um, think he, um, he, he had a sh the, the geezer broke, and then it was his, it was his turn. Whatever, whatever the terminology is in snooker, he when he, he just cleared the whole table, and. Um, yeah, he's he, go, he can do both hands, can't he? Like I suppose, like in boxing, if some people can box orthodox and southpaw, he can do that of a snooker cue, and it it was just incredible to watch, and a bit like you know you in a way, he he speaks his mind. I've seen him in some interviews, and they they were talking about the yeah. next generation, and he was just like they're shit, they're shit. <laughs> just, you know what I mean, well, I mean, look, I mean, look, I mean, we're looking next generation of boxers, who's truly coming up. Apart from Daniel Dubar, 
who's probably 25 now, you could say he's you still got 10 years and you've got Huey Fury, who is sort of on the younger side of heavyweight boxers. Who you got truly coming up? Maybe Johnny Fisher, but I don't think Johnny Fisher, no disrespect to him, I like to watch him. I like his right, and I like his old man, his old man's love. I just think it might be British title and that'd be it for him. You know what I mean? I just think he's he's a popular lad. I, I just think, you know, and and that is that who we got, who else we got apart from him? You know what I mean? It just seems nobody really is grasping and coming up. And you know, and, and Johnny Fish is what is our only hope, you know what I mean, really. You know, what is he, 20, 21, you know, is it is that age? Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think he's he's a young lad and yeah, got a huge following. He's incredibly popular. Yeah, and he's answered all the questions so far. I think last fight was a big, big step up. Um, I think he, I think the one he fought last time beat his previous opponent. I might be mistaken. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. But I think he injured his hand. I think he's injured at the moment. Um, because I think his old man posted something a little while ago. But you never know yeah, what's yeah. Around, you never know what's around the corner, do you, mate? You know, there might be heavy heavyweight he's out there. Fabio, how old is Fabio Wardley? I don't know, mate. Do you think Do you think Fraser Clark will have a good career? Because there's a lot made about how old he is. He's, he's, he's. So this is this is what a lot a lot of people say. In my opinion, and I, you know, it's what I repeat what Porky said on his channel that when you're being Olympic, like like even when Joshua was like a gold medalist or whatever medalist he was, they should start with the top fifteen because they're that credible, that good. You know, no disrespect to Jake Darnell, we got in there with him. You know, um, he, he got flogged that night. And I know it's for money, they picked someone out and, and got him. But the thing is, he shouldn't be against that level of opponent. They should step him up straight away. And he's in the age he is. You know, so, you know, he should be fighting. I mean, I'll give you an example. He should be fighting. Maybe some like straight away Steve Robinson or someone like that. You know, that level straight away, who's had a couple of wins, you know, make it interesting. But they don't want to put people in like that because Steve Robinson sells tickets in Newcastle. But someone who like I don't know, Nathan Gorman. Nathan Gorman would be a good opponent, Fraser Clark. That would be a good battle. You know, so and I and I think that would be a 50-50 fight. And I just think, you know, straight away you should be put in the amongst of them. Not with someone lower down. <clears throat> we should make it as a rule, personally. Yeah, I think yeah, it's it's, it's difficult because I think you know, he's he's with he's with uh, yeah he's with boxer isn't he and Sky. I suppose they don't want to move him along too quickly. They're going to protect their asset, and we all know at the moment as well. If you lose a fight, it's almost like people just write you off. You you know you're, you're rubbish. Um, um, but but no, it'd be interesting to see to see what he does. Um, but listen, mate, before I let you go, um, I appreciate you jumping back on again. We're not yeah. feeling hundred percent. Anything you'd like to yeah. add? Um. <laughs> Not really. Uh, anyone watches this, give a uh, TISB Sports a follow, um, and I'll be promoting it for you. Um, and nice. yeah, you know, and I don't know, just um, just don't get ill like me. Don't. I, I just hope. Do you know what? One thing I wanted to say, Chris Jenkins. I mean, I I mess I I messaged him, and hats off, hats off to Chris Jenkins. He did well against Marco. He was winning that fight. And I said, I messaged him. I said, well done, mate. If he just took a knee, if he took a knee mm, and yeah. not and just, and just gave him some time and take the count, I think he would have got through it, you know, and beaten him. Because uh, Marku was, Mark, I, I, I just think, I think this, I, 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 I hope he don't quit. I don't I hope he don't like retire, Chris Jenkins. I, I do rate him. I like, I like watching him. You know, he was, he's doing some great textbook fight, uh, you know, textbook throwing good combinations. And Marku, you know, he's going on that. Okay, he's been a former British champion. Now, where does he go now? Okay, if you think you're any good, Marku, fight David Avenician then. I bet you don't. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's, and I think Chris Jenkins, fair play to me, he was winning that fight. And I thought, Christ, I wanted to because I betted on him as well because I thought he's going to do him. I remember you saying that. that yeah. And it was just that he just got caught. And I thought, bastard. And, you know, and it just, it just, yeah, it, I think it was just a bit of, um, you had him on the rope and he just caught him well and uh, fair, hats off to Chris, well done, mate. Yeah, just to add to that, 
I've got to say, Chris Jenkins, since we started this channel, probably one of the nicest blokes that's been on the channel. Yeah. So generous with his time. And yeah, watching that fight like you, it's almost like just take a knee, take the count, compose yourself. Yeah. You may, you know, the outcome may still be the same because he, <laughs> because he clearly buzzed him. But I don't, yeah, I don't know what's next for him, whether he'll get back on Sky with Boxer. I'm not sure. He's, he's I, I think there's, there's, there's some fights out there for him still. There's still fights. And I, I think, I just think Marku is, I don't know. I, I don't think he's, um, it's not I don't rate him. I just think he's just, he, he, he talks too much and he says this, he's going to do this, do that. Well, you go. If you're going to do that, fight someone like David Avenatius. Fight someone credible, then step up. You know. So I mean, I'd like to see him maybe fight Liam Taylor. Um, I, I don't think he might. I think Liam Taylor's got a, a tad more punch resistance than um, Chris Jenkins. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he took some heavy blows against David Avenatius. Heavy blows, and you know, um, absolutely. I mean, Chris. I mean, I mean, Mark could fight someone like Josh Kelly, you know. Um, Josh Kelly, you know, he suffered that loss, you know. That'd be a good fight for him. Um, similar sort of good sort of styles, you know. But I don't know. I don't. I, I just. I hope Chris looks back at this. I mean, was it? Is it fourth loss? Is it fourth loss? Third loss? Something like that, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think there's some fights out there for him, and he's still. I think he's he's cusping on still British level. He just got unlucky. It was just a freak of a punch. Um, and, you know, I, I, I just, you know. Boxing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah I, just, I just, you know what? I'm heartfelt for him because he, you know, when he got buzzed, he still was up and, and he was still trying to avoid him. He still was semi there. And I thought, I, I even shouted at the screen, take the fucking knee. Yeah. Right? And, and I think if he took the knee, I, I generally thought if he took the knee, he might have come through that because he's been buzzed before in fights and come back. I've seen him do it. So, you know, I don't know. It's just, um, yeah, no, uh, commiserations, Chris. I just think that from last year when he was considering retiring, I know he had a chat with his family, his team, he decided to come back. He got a good win earlier on in the year against yeah. Julius and Dongo. And then, of it's course, you know, you know, we all know what happened with Marco. I hope, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he made a few quid, that, but... Yeah, we'd like to see him fight again. But um, I spoke to him a few days ago. Like you, I messaged him after the fight, just sort of saying, you know, keep your chin up. Maybe that's not the right word, but, you know, um, and wished him all the best. And hope, yeah. I, think, I think he said he's like, got like a perforated eardrum in a minute. But we're hoping to get him on next week. Uh, yeah. That's the plan, just to see what his plans are, just to have a, just to have a catch up with him. But yeah, top bloke. And um, yeah, well, I look forward to seeing what he's got to say. You know what? Do you know what? With him, he seems really genuine. <clears throat> and I have, I have time with that. There's no, um, <clears throat> it just seems like he's got a heart of gold outside the ring. He's just genuine. And I like that. I appreciate people like that. You know, when someone tries too hard or tries to be something, try and Chris isn't that. It's just himself. And I like that. And I appreciate that. And, you know, nice kid. Yeah, I think he's just a proper, genuine family man. Yeah. And who, who who boxes, and I think you know that, that that that's all it is really. But yeah, like I say, get him on next week, see what his intentions are, where he's gonna. I know, I know. Before the fight, he said after he's gonna take some time off, regardless. I suppose when you come off a you know a loss like that, it's got to be hard to take because you know when you're in there, it's just you and your opponent. Yeah, you know, there's, there's no other. You know, it's not like if you play for a football club, rugby team. Maybe you can sort of shift the blame, make, maybe look for excuses. But yeah. when it's just you and, and your opponent, it, you know, it must be hard to take. When especially when you sacrifice so much and you know you you, you miss out on family time. But yeah, it'd be good to have a catch up with him next week. Yeah, cool, cool. But listen, mate. All right, then. Well, thanks for jumping back on. I hope you feel better. Yeah. And, uh, oh, so I'm sure we will be. I'm sure we will be. I just blame you, um, Tom. I just, you know, you, you, you know, if it rains, I'll blame you. If it, you know, if it's windy outside, I just blame you. It's simple as that. I just blame you, mate. Yeah. All right, then, mate. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, um, hopefully, uh, yeah, you're fighting in a few weeks, so hopefully, we, yeah, we'll get you back on when you're back and have a catch up. Definitely, definitely. No, no problem. All, All right, right, mate. Have a good evening.
Cheers. Thank you. See you later. Cheers, mate.